here with I'm here with Pete and Kush of Who on Earth. They have a new album coming out, Blame, on October 28th. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, man. We are in full, you know, promotion mode, production mode, and uh, getting excited for the release on Friday. So let's start off with the starting point of this record. How long has this album been cooking? And how long have you guys been working on all the finer details in order to have it ready now by October 28th for the release? Yeah, well, that's a that's a great question. I mean, we, we've been saying that this album took decades to make in some respects, but for the actual recording from start to finish, it's been almost uh, almost two years. You know, COVID delayed us a lot in the, in the recording process. And, you know, this is our first album. So we leaked out a few singles, probably more than most bands would over the past, say, six months, just to build a following, get our name out there. Uh, which we've been doing and now um you know it's it's ready for full launch hopefully come with we've got some gigs lined up and some interviews like this one and um you know what we can really start the the launch of the band and and you know and keep the momentum going so so are you guys excited or nervous or a little bit of both maybe it's a cocktail of everything going on right now definitely I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I, I think the albums, I mean, I'm a little biased, but we really are proud of it. You know, for us, it it represents all of our influences. You know, I grew up in the new wave of Brit British heavy metal, and I've seen all the major genres of rock and metal as they were happening. And the album has a little bit of all of that sprinkled in. And um, people have said, oh, you guys are a little bit of a throwback. And we take that as a compliment. You know, the, the guitar solo is back, the sing-along chorus, the, the good riffs, the good songs. Uh, we're not trying to be, you know, these crazy technical players. We, we just want to write good songs, and we think we really did that and nailed it. So we're excited. I, I, I agree with everything you said, because obviously I have had a chance to listen to Blame, and I really enjoy it, and I, I want to pick you guys' brain a little bit about all the details. But Thank you for that. We get into those details, a little bit more about the recording process. Was the recording process a long one, considering that this is the debut record and, and you obviously want to get everything right? Uh, you, you can't make your first impression twice. So this album has that important role of really opening the doors for you. So did that change when it came to the recording process in terms of perhaps making it a little bit longer? I don't think so. You know, the way we did this album was... Uh, we, we certainly wanted to get it right, but we didn't overdo it. We didn't overanalyze. We were very lucky to have Mike Orlando from Adrenaline Mob as our producer and now as a friend. Uh, and he actually played guitar on the album for us as a guest guitarist. So working with him, we kind of knew when things needed a little bit more, whether it was more harmonies, whether it was another layer of guitar um, and what, so, and sometimes things that needed to be taken away. But when it was done, we knew it was done and we were careful not to overdo it, not to overproduce it. You know, we wanted to keep the spirit of, uh, of where the songs came from. A lot of them were written decades ago. Some of them were written in the last couple of years. We just wanted to keep the spirit of each song and, uh, and not have this overproduced, you know, 100 tracks of backing vocals type thing. We just wanted to keep the rawness, but we also wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, that it was done um, with full production, because knowing that the album is what stands the test of time. That's what will be out there forever. Um, so I think we balanced that pretty well. Um, you, you mentioned Mike Orlando. Uh, why did you guys pick him? Was the friendship the first reason or is there something more to it? I had worked with Mike in the past in a very short project and, and met him personally through a friend, uh, a mutual friend. And uh, I also play in a, in a thrash metal band and we uh, recorded with Mike also. So um, there was no question. I mean, um, the way the facility that he has, the way he operates as an engineer and as a musician. And don't forget, Mike recorded every Adrenaline Mob in his studio. <laughs> Everything that you heard. And that, that was an incredibly successful band uh, that sold you know millions of records. That was all done by him in the same exact place that we recorded our album. Uh, his attention to detail, his just his you know way of getting the best out of each musician, uh, and his technical know-how. Um, he had our confidence right away. 
Was there any challenges during the process of, of recording the record that, you know, due to the fact that this is a debut album, perhaps you weren't, uh, you know, you weren't expecting that it kind of came a little bit out of left field uh, and, and that threw perhaps a little bit of a monkey wrench uh, into your plans? I would say the only thing that really was the big monkey wrench was uh, was the COVID. Every time we try to get in to do something, there was always something blocking our way. But other than that, no, I mean, it was, uh, it's amazing how streamlined it became. And uh, it's, it's game on when you're down in there with Mike Orlando, you know, there's no, you know, farting around doing, you know, kidding around kind of stuff. It's all serious. Uh, so you go in there and he's got a game plan of what you got to get done and it gets done. So other than COVID, we didn't really have any, any issues. You guys mentioned uh, a little bit of the uh, influences that you have had in the sound and how those influences are sprinkled throughout the entire record. When you have an album like that, it becomes really difficult to put it under one single category. So if, if you're trying to explain to somebody who hasn't heard the album what the band sounds like, how do you guys define it? That's a great question because we're, we're, we, we've heard the feedback that we get from people. We've heard it all from Sabbath to Alice in Chains to Shine Down to Foreigner, like um, to Life of Agony. I mean, which I, I can see the I can see the Alice in Chains reference quite a bit, perhaps more than any other. It does have, but maybe not just Alice in Chains, but Alice in Chains with a little bit of a, a sludge vibe at times. I mean, it's. It's mm -hmm. really interesting, specifically because of the vocal tone. I absolutely love the vocal tone. Sorry to interrupt you. I just, no, I, no. That, I didn't think about Alice in Chains when I was listening to the, the record, but now that you're mentioning, I, I, I can see that. Sorry about that. No, 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 yeah. that's, that's great. And, th and thank you for that. And that's a, that's a great compliment. Like every, you know, we want to sound like all of that. I mean, we've been influenced. We've been doing this for a while. You know, you could see the grays here, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, we're not, we're not 25, you know, and, uh, but, but the, but the beauty of that is, is that all of those influences, all the genres that I mentioned to you, we, we've lived through all of it, enjoyed all of it as it was happening, you know, consciously or subconsciously, it influences you as a musician. And uh, and it's just like sprinkling, like it's like sand art, you know, changing the colors and the layers and um, however that comes out. But to answer your question, like, how do we describe? I think we're still figuring it out. How to, how to describe ourselves? Are we heavy metal? Are we hard rock? You know, we've got some songs like Unbeaten, which are nice songs. We've got songs that are metal, songs that are hard rock, songs that are rock. The, uh, the goal it was and uh, was to have 10 songs that were very different and unique from each other and hopefully from a majority of what's out there right now. And with Kush, as you said, Kush's vocals are, are unique. And, and I mean, that's our, that's our secret weapon. That's our secret sauce. I mean, everything the guy sings just, just puts a, a who on earth stamp on it, uh, which I think is important. Yeah, it had, uh, you know, now that you took me back to the vocals, let's, let's go down that path. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly really enjoy the vocal performance on this record. It was warm. It had it had texture to it. Uh, it. It helped ground the record. And it gave me that, I mean, it gave me a little bit of a Southern twang to it. Like uh, when I think of bands like, you know, Corrosion of Conformity or bands like Down that are, you know, you could, you could call them sludge or you could call them heavy metal, whatever it is that you want to put a definition or a title on. They always had like great vocal performances that, that really have warmth to how the, the lyrical content gets delivered. And I thought this record had all of that. Uh, is that is that an organic style that you have just in your delivery or, or do you aim to go down that path? I, honestly, coming into this, being that we were doing cover bands and stuff, I didn't even know what my voice was because I had manipulated for so many years trying to sound like so many other people that to come out and to sing and let it just come out. You know what I'm saying? It, in the delivery, it's, the, no, there's, I never tried to sound like anyone. I just tried, it just came out. I went with the music and gave what I thought the music itself needed for tone, so. When it comes to the sound, does is there a one element on this album that you feel like drives the songs forward? Is this a guitar driven album or is this an album that depends a lot more on all the parts coming together at the right time? Definitely all the parts. Uh, it just as as each the bass and then the drums and then the rhythm came in 
and it all started to get thickened up vocally because you know I, I i would get rougher on stuff but i would come in singing it maybe a little pretty and it didn't need that it needed some gr you know grit, grit in it yeah. so yeah the, the, mu the music definitely all of it together creates an energy that makes me focus and go in that direction so now you discovering your voice on this record does that change now how you guys work on future songs for future albums oh definitely for me it does we we've, we've uh we're also we're going to make melodies and lyrics to songs music that's already produced and we're also going to make songs with just my melodies and voice how it comes out and then pete's going to make the music to match yeah that uh for mostly all of the songs on blame were written on the bass um and and mike orlando who's just masterful knows knows music was able to complement a lot of it and take it to a whole different level with the guitar work and to to what kush was saying you know we wrote the music and then we we, we came up with the lyrics and the melodies what we're doing now is because of kush's voice and the direction and the diversity that he had as we can write any kind of song the second album we've got 12 songs kind of in some way shape or form in development and some of them we only have choruses and and verses and sing singing stuff and concepts for what they're going to be about which is almost the opposite of what we did on blame so it's going to be exciting to to add that to the mix uh we're already singing along choruses you know you might hear some hair nation on the next album we're going to go anywhere and everywhere where we think the songs are good you know that's really interesting because you you took one approach for the debut record and now it looks like you're going to take the opposite of approach like 180 degrees and you're going to take a different approach for the follow-up album normally bands tend to stay close to home uh, especially in the those opening records just because of a sense of comfort so ha has the time you guys spent together on this album given you perhaps a little bit more miles uh in order to be more comfortable together and change that approach for the next record well, it's definitely given us a lot of growth as in uh you know songwriters uh we're we've decided to go down a couple different paths especially after the album gets you know fully released and we find out what people like the best and we're going to head in that direction and start giving them what they want instead of just giving them what we have but yeah we've we've grown a lot as as writers uh, and figuring things out and realizing how melody and lyrics must align when you make a melody and the sounds that come out the 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 words have to match the tone of the melody so it's yeah it's it's definitely given us a broader idea of where we need to go when it, when it comes to those lyrics do you guys now uh wait for the songs to be done in order to write the full lyrical content for the track or or you know the inspiration hits you jock some stuff down you start to put some ideas together and then you obviously fine-tune it when the time comes yeah it's de it's definitely more the latter when uh when we're when i uh put a song together i already have a working title and most of the time the working title is the title and it, it just it's often it's just a title i don't have i don't have anything specific that i want to talk about but it's a feel it's like oh this one sounds you know um this one sounds like it's about this or or i can make this about this and then we go from there and then we say okay say we come up with a title like the price you know okay well what do we want to write it about what does that mean how can we write a song that actually means something and we love you know maybe uh some of our influence one of my big influences of this tool how the, the dual meaning of things how you can write about something that is obvious to me but it may not be obvious to you and uh and i love reading interviews with people when they tell talk about what a song is about and i'm like oh i had no idea that's what the song was about i thought it was about this and this and that's the beauty of it and we really want that to be a part of our songs because it's just a, a an important layer um and, and it adds so much depth and we really want the stuff to be considered whether you like it or not at least thoughtful deep you know emotive and um and not just you know hey we, we like pretty girls you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's one of the things that i really enjoyed about the lyrical content on this record because i thought it was super catchy but really well done not not simplified you know what i mean not overly simpler flight like it had it had a little bit more for you to to get out of it but mm -hmm. it didn't overcomplicate it either which allowed it to be catchy and be hooky it, it was a really interesting dynamic 
uh, that works really well for the sound that you guys created. Now, when you look back at the songs on this record, is there one specific track that you see it as being a little bit more personal to either one of you that, that touches home perhaps a little bit deeper than the rest? Well, it does for me, yeah. I have, yeah. I have one that's uh, really emotional for me, so. What, what, what song is done? No, oh, that's the Hatriarch. Yeah. You have one? I, I have I have two. Well, Hatriarch's, Hatriarch's up there, but uh, for me, it's uh, it's down and out and unbeaten. You know, down and out is a, is a, basically I wrote it as a story about a guy who wakes up in a blackout. Uh, he's an alcoholic, and uh, he he knows he's done something horrible, but he doesn't know what it is. But he knows that he's at the end. He's hit bottom, and, uh, and that's powerful. And um, yeah, that was a personal personal song for me. And then uh, the other song, Unbeaten, is kind of the the good ending to down and out. It's like about how, you know, accepting the helping hand and, and recovering and, and uh, rising up from trauma, from, you know, things in life that uh, you certainly didn't expect or plan and they may have been unfortunate, but there's the other side, you know, you, you're still in the game and you can make the most of life and you can look at life differently and, and have those horrible events actually be blessings. And um, so those two is kind of are, are, are really deep for me. I, I got one last question for you guys. And that is, as you guys sat down to put this record together, working with Mike, finalizing all the final finer details, did you guys set any expectations for yourselves as a band of what you wanted to achieve with this record? World domination. Nothing. If you're gonna go, might as well go big, right? That's World it. domination. <laughs> yeah i mean shirts merchandise we want to we want to be that band that comes out with the album every year like it was when we were growing up you know we want to constantly put out good music good shows um and uh yeah and and not world domination in an ego way but in a bringing back good hard rock and metal you know well you guys are on your way you, you've taken the first step and that's that's <laughs> sometimes the most difficult one to take. So at yeah. least you guys have done that. So from now on, we'll be expecting bigger things from you guys. Uh, I want to thank you both for taking the time today to talk to me about the record. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Best of luck with the release. And, uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys playing some shows. Uh, we'd love to come up there and, and see you. And, uh, and we really appreciate you taking the time out and having us on, uh, especially a new band, independent, doing it ourselves. It really means a lot to us. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, all the best to you guys. Take care and uh, and good luck on that 28th with the release. Thank you, brother.